Metalucent. Our singular purpose is helping small and mid-sized biotech companies bring new therapies to life globally. We are Elucent. Our focus is you. I'm here with Eamon Hobbs from Synchromune and uh, at the AACR conference. And uh, so you presented data this, this week. You've got uh, phase one data. Can you talk a little bit about it? I'd love to, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, we had a very exciting uh, presentation yesterday where we presented our phase one data in metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. And uh, the, uh, the results are, are uh, uh, spectacular in that we got an 85% objective response rate in end stage patients with uh, bony mets and soft tissue mets. And these are patients that are in hospice basically. Hospice bound for, for sure. They've run out of all options. And uh, uh, 13 patients are valuable, 11 of those responded, 85% response rate. And uh, five of those are complete responses. And, and uh, the bony mets resolved as well. So a complete uh, resolution of all disease like it never happened. And so, how are the, the partial responses? Are they still progressing? Or, they are. They I mean, are. They're, they're progressing towards exactly complete response, progressing not progressing. In a good way. Not, yes. <laughs> exactly right. Yes, we, uh, we expect that uh, many of those will, uh, will march towards complete responses. And can you tell me about the... Uh, the mechanism of action for the, it's a kind of complex, multi, multi-step, multi multi it, uh, it is, process. It, it, in, uh, in effect, it's, it's very simple in that it's a three-step process. We call it SYNC-T, and it's a drug device combination. The first step is to utilize the device, which is a needle-like device, proprietary, uh, insert it into a selected tumor, which can be a primary or a MET. That device does two things. The first thing it does is it uh, uh, lyses the tumor, oncolysis, with a freeze-thaw cycle, rupturing cell membranes, exposing the cancer antigens and uh, damage products. And the second thing the device does is it's a conduit for the infusion of our proprietary drug. So the uh, drug is infused at a volume that's far larger than the, uh, the oncolytic zone, which saturates the tissue and causes the, uh, the released antigens to flow out of the tumor microenvironment into the draining lymphatics, where we have effectively synchronized the location of what you need to get activated T cells that can recognize the cancer systemically, an episcopal effect. And the three things you need to synchronize the location of are the, uh, the drug, the antigens, and the immune system. And we all know the lymphatics, and especially the draining lymphatics, are some of the highest densities of immune system components in the body. And then, you, can you talk about what the mechanism of action for the drug is? You've got well, quite a few, actually. We do, we do. The, uh, the drug is a uh, single drug that uh, has four active ingredients, all biologics. It has an anti-CTLA-4, an anti-PD-1, a, uh, a, a CD40 agonist, and a TLR9 agonist oligonucleotide. So everything that we already know works well. That's right, well exactly. And- we're hitting, we're hitting immunosuppression from every angle and uh, highly immunostimulatory at the same time. Right. Awesome. Great. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you. Pleasure. Synchronize the presence of an in situ personalized vaccine uh, with a drug that has uh, four different mechanisms of actions to reverse immune suppression. With the following relevant disclosures. Uh, as you guys know, in pancreatic or in prostate cancer, in metastatic castrators in prostate cancer, immune therapy has not been very successful. Uh, the tumors are cold, without much in the way of T-cell infiltration, and uh, responses to PD-1 are in a 3 to 6% range. Uh, when you combine PD-1s and CTLA-4s, you get a lot of autoimmune toxicity in patients, and a significant fraction of the patients can't complete therapy because of uh, side effects. So how do we overcome these problems? The SYNC-T therapy design is an in-situ personalized cancer vaccine that is made by freezing to do oncolysis and release tumor antigens within the tumor microenvironment. At the same time, uh, we do an intratumoral infusion local regionally into the tumor and the regional lymph nodes. That is a, a multi-target biologic drug. Um, this results in, uh, obviously, a high local concentration of drug where the money is in terms of the tumor microenvironment and less systemic exposure for the component APIs within the drug. The way the therapy works, we put in a, a, a needle into the tumor. We do freezing, uh, about a one centimeter ice ball to release antigens. 
and damps uh, within the tumor microenvironment in that same exact location at the same time. And you can treat either a metastatic deposit or a primary tumor lesion here. Uh, we infuse the multi-target uh, drug into the lytic zone. Uh, this results in a systemic anti-tumor response to T-cell mediated um, in the patients. SV102 is a product that's composed of four different uh, biologic APIs, an anti-PD-1, an anti-CTLA-4, a CD40 agonist antibody, and a Taylor 9 agonist. Uh, all that are given as one drug with a fixed dose combination. The procedure that's used is one that uh, urologists are very familiar with, the typical way that they would do uh, tumor biopsies of prostate cancer patients. Uh, through uh, transrectal ultrasound guidance, you basically put a needle into the tumor and then do the same team procedure, create a 10 millimeter uh, ice ball. That lysis creates uh, oncolysis of a portion of the tumor. And then we infuse a total of 15 million volume at a rate of three mils per minute. That volume exceeds the, the tumor and is then distributed into the regional area, the regional lymph nodes of the peritumoral space. If the only site of disease in a prostate cancer patient is a lymph node or uh, lesions outside the prostate and the prostate is removed, then you can treat any of those lesions and that would be done by an intervention radiologist. By the same type of methodology, they would do tumor biopsies. Key inclusion criteria in the study are metastatic, histologically confirmed cancer resistant prostate cancer. They have to have measurable disease by resist criteria. They have to have a soft tissue lesion that can be targeted. Exclusion criteria are basically any serious concomitant illnesses, active infections, or viral like vaccines in the recent past. The trial design is in every four week cycle. Each of those four week cycles consists of a single lesion being targeted uh, with the therapy, with the CT therapy, and the SV102 confusional therapy. Uh, patients are assessed for response on an every eight week basis. If they go into complete remission, and they're followed on every three uh, month basis. The primary endpoints of the study were to evaluate safety and toxicity, with secondary endpoints of overall response rate by resist, relapse progression of survival by the prostate cancer working group three criteria, overall survival, and we have exploratory PK and PD final analysis. Subject demographics, there are 15 subjects enrolled as of 10 January this year. 60% of the patients were white, 33 Hispanic, 7% black, median age 61, 40% PS0, and 53% PS1. Uh, all the patients are hormone refractory or refused uh, baseline hormone uh, treatment. 23% of prior chemo, 38% prior radiation, and 15% other immunotherapy. Uh, these are the summary of the responses in the first uh, 13 patients that have been evaluated out of the 15 patients treated. The overall objective response rate is 85%. 15% uh, had stable disease, 46% had a partial response, 38.5% had a complete response. Importantly, seven out of the 13 patients, uh, all the patients but one had uh, bony metastasis, uh, had complete resolution of all bony metastasis, and no one had progressive disease. All of the complete responders had a PSA of less than two. When they achieved their response, uh, two patients have subsequently died of us. Uh, this is a waterfall plot showing the responses, which are deep uh, and uh, surprisingly common. Um, the patients that had, uh, these are ongoing treatments, so a number of patients are still continuing to respond to therapy, so the responses may improve from what we've observed thus far. Uh, this is one of the patients uh, who had about 50 different skeletal metastases. Um, the patient uh, was treated with about five, six cycles of CT therapy and started to respond uh, quite nicely. At uh, seven months follow-up, had a complete remission. Uh, there was still some abnormality in the prostate, which we biopsied, and it was uh, negative for cancer. Um, this patient is doing very well. Uh, this is another subject who had a very bulky adenopathy uh, throughout their abdomen. Uh, three, four centimeter diameter lesions uh, was treated and uh, with the CT therapy and also went into complete remission, also had the resolution of skeletal metastasis in this patient. Uh, this is an example of a patient with partial remission. The patient had a uh, rib metastasis, had a large lesion in the prostate that was very active. Uh, 
Uh, this is about a PSMA PET scan, and you can see uh, that that lesion has gotten much smaller. The patient continues on active treatment. The treatment of urgent side effects uh, when you do local regional therapy at these much reduced doses compared to systemic exposure is that we've had no grade three or four autoimmune side effects in the patient cohort in the first 15 patients despite these very deep responses. We have seen a lot of grade one and two adverse events that you might expect, um, flu-like symptoms, fever, uh, some vomiting in a few patients, you know, headaches, myalgias, things like that, all very mild. We did see a grade two uh, hepatitis that resolved in a week. Um, the only grade three treatment emergent adverse events we saw were uh, a urinary retention in a patient that resolved a few days after the procedure that was related to the use of the catheter, and a patient that had a spinal cord compression at the site of a pre-existing large metastasis in the spine. That patient was actually taken off therapy in a month, but already had the tumor decrease in size by more than 10% at the family's request because they were concerned because he developed a cordial compression. Um, an important thing to look at is the phase two recommended doses, which are on the top chart represented by the red bars, and the actual intertumoral infusion doses that we used. Um, you can see that we only use about 10 to 20 percent of what a systemic intravenous dose would be. Uh, since that's given local regionally, when you look at the CMAX, you can see very high levels consistent with uh, other studies of PD1s so or CTLA4s or CD40s in the peripheral blood. But if you compare that to what you see systemic exposure wise, after intratumoral local regional infusion, uh, it's very low. So you get very low systemic exposure, which is correlating with this very low rate of autoimmune side effects in the patients. Uh, you do see uh, very nice cytokine responses in these patients that happen very rapidly after treatment with CINC-T. Uh, in the first 24 hours, you can already see interfering gamma, gamma antin of alpha IL-6. Uh, the things about, we're doing pre and post treatment biopsies, but I don't have any data available yet. So in conclusion, CINC-T therapy for metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer is demonstrating a highly encouraging uh, clinical activity in a group of very resistant patients. Uh, very important uh, resolution of bone metastasis in these patients would be a site of active disease which is very difficult to treat. Uh, initial safety data demonstrated no grade three or four adverse events that were autoimmune related in this initial group of 15 patients. Um, the overall systemic drug exposure by PK analysis is quite low compared to intravenous administration of this multi-component fixed dose uh, drug. And uh, we believe that further study of CINC-T therapy uh, is warranted in this and uh, other types of diseases with this approach. I'd like to thank George Bendergast, who's been a long-term collaborator, uh, Jonathan Lewis, who is the, the CMO's moving oversight of the study, Dr. Jason Williams, who's really a pioneer in this area, through his clinical practice, has developed a lot of the key concepts behind the CINC-T therapy. Dr. Vargas uh, did the procedures on essentially all the patients that are in this study, and the rest of the collaborative team, and I appreciate the audience, and I really appreciate the patients who participated in this study. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be anywhere. Thank you very much.